Hey guys and welcome back. Hopefully you've been enjoying our show so far. Thanks so much for staying tuned. If you like what you've been seeing so far in terms of the career videos and the example videos, also the introduction videos, just have a look-see at our Tenfold Live Education app. It is fantastic. It has so much more great content on it. It's really there to help you with your maths and your science. We're working on all three grades in FET. We're working on grade 10, 11 and 12. We're here to help you. We're here to get you to completely crush your matric. You guys are our number one priority. Thanks again to Liberty for sponsoring our show. We couldn't have done it without you guys. You're fantastic. And thanks so much all of you guys for sending in your questions. We really do appreciate your input. You guys are such rock stars. Um, lastly, I have a question that I've actually chosen myself. It wasn't sent in by a learner. I decided to do this question just because it allows me to go into 2D and 3D trigonometry without having to work with numbers and stuff. Because the moment you have to start using your calculator, it sometimes gets a little bit nervy when you have to use your ratios and things. So I actually wanted to do this question just to like help you guys understand how to transition from 2D to 3D, how to incorporate different triangles in your work in, etc. And I'm actually just going to go through it as if like where I was doing a lesson with you guys, just so that you know how to look at your stuff. Because I know for me, if I look at a geometric question, I automatically see the relationships because that's just how my brain works. But I know that there are learners amongst you guys that you don't see the shapes and the relationships in everything. So I really want to try and go through this nicely and slowly and explain everything so that you know what to look for if this isn't the stuff that you automatically understand. So I'm going to jump right into this question. Hopefully this helps you guys. And please, if you have any questions and feedback on our show, post it on our Facebook page. We really want to know what you think, what you're struggling with, what you think we're not doing well enough, because honestly, you guys dictate our show. We're just here to help you. We're not here to make ourselves look good. We just want you to crush your matric. OK, so let's jump into this question. It reads, in the diagram below, D is a point vertically above C. Okay, I didn't put that in my diagram, so I'm going to say C is over there because this is vertically above here. It means that it's perpendicular. It says that DC is Y meters in length. Okay, that's given to us on the diagram. And it says that the angle of elevation of D from B is theta. Okay, so that's just that little angle there. It says that angle DAB, the whole angle here, is equal to alpha and the angle DBA, which is that whole base angle there, is equal to beta. Okay, guys, so when you get a question that looks like this, what we're trying to test you in your matric is your ability to see that that base of that triangle there is a flat surface. And then you have basically like a tower standing perpendicular to that surface, and then you have two cables coming down from that tower which makes the whole thing a 3D shape. We're testing your ability to look at this 2D piece of paper and understand that this is a 3D scenario. Okay, so the first question in this says, determine the length of DB. Look at me in my fantastic English because I'm a maths teacher. Determine the length of DB in terms of Y and theta. Okay, so let's look at the variables we need to be using. Okay, first we're looking for DB. We need Y and theta. Okay, so the moment you get a question like this, Identify the side they want you to look at. Identify the variables you're supposed to be using and try and find a triangle that incorporates all three of those variables. Okay, so if I look at this diagram, I see that I have a lovely right angle triangle that has all three of those elements that we need to be using. D, B, C is there, Y is there, and this is a 90 degrees. Okay, so this first question is quite basic and that it's just testing your ability to recognize that there's a right angle triangle, first of all, and then understand that because there's a right angle triangle, an angle that you can work with, and two sides that you're in involving in your question, you need to work with just a simple trigonometric ratio. Okay, so if we look at what we're trying to prove, DB is the side adjacent, oh no, that's actually the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle. It's the hypotenuse that we're trying to find, and we're given DC, which is equal to Y, and that's the side opposite the angle theta. So the ratio that incorporates opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So we say that sine of theta is equal to opposite, which is Y, over the hypotenuse, which is DB, which is what we're trying to find. Okay, so now we manipulate, make DB the subject of the formula. Let me extend my page a little bit for some space and we get that db is equal to y over sine of theta. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It says, determine the length of db in terms of y and theta. So we have y and sine theta, which is absolutely perfect. Okay, 
So that's your 2D testing. We're just testing your ability to see a 2D uh, tr trigonometric triangle and just work with a nice ratio in there because you have a 90 degree angle. Remember, ratios only apply in 90 degree triangles. Okay, next question. Let me write out what we found in the previous question because it may well help us in this next one. We find that it was y over sine of theta. Okay, so that's that side over there. Now, when we have a scaffolder question, like I mentioned earlier, often the first part that you worked out is going to help you in solving the second part. So that's why I've rewritten this over here so that you can understand. Okay, so now it says show that AB, the side along the bottom here, is equal to y sine of a plus b, or alpha plus beta, all over sine of theta multiplied by sine of alpha. Okay, so now that I'm looking, we've been given this angle here and this angle here. We're now trying to find that side. So the triangle that we're working in automatically becomes this triangle that's on the 3D side. The AB, that's given to us as beta, alpha. Okay, sum of angles in a triangle, like I said earlier, 180 degrees minus alpha plus beta. Cool, okay. And we found an expression for DB. We have an expression for this side. So if we have a side opposite an angle and we're trying to find this other side opposite another angle, sine ratio, guys. The moment you have sides opposite angles, sine ratio, easy stuff. Well, not sine ratio, I'm actually talking rubbish. It's a sine rule. Remember, difference. Sine rule is what we're working with right now. Sine ratio. 90 degree triangle, okay. So let's apply the sine rule in our triangle here. We're looking for AB, so let's say AB over sine of the op angle opposite it, which is 180 degrees minus alpha plus beta, is equal to, well, we found an expression for DB, so let's use that, and DB is opposite the angle of alpha, so opposite sine of alpha, okay. Now, Let's manipulate. We're trying to find AB. So AB is the subject of the formula. We get DB that we had earlier. Sine of 180 degrees minus an angle is just sine of that angle all over sine of alpha. Now remember, we found an expression for DB. It is Y over sine of theta. So we get AB is equal to Y over sine of theta multiplied by sine of alpha plus beta and that is all over sine of alpha. Now remember earlier I said if you have a simple denominator and a simple denominator, i.e. they're not fractions, you can just combine the denominators. So numerator is y multiplied by sine of alpha plus beta. Combine the denominator so we get sine of theta multiplied by sine of alpha. Let's check. Okay, so we need to prove that AB is equal to y sine of alpha plus beta over sine of theta multiplied by sine of alpha, which is exactly what we've proved here. Okay, so guys, I specifically chose this question because we weren't working with any degrees or numbers or anything. We we're literally just working with representations of the angles, alpha, beta, theta, just so that you can try and recognize that you have 2D uh, 90 degree triangles that you can apply simple trigonometric ratios to and then use that information into your manipulations of the 3D stuff. More often than not, we're going to ask you a simple question as the first part, and then you use that answer to solve for a more complicated question. So I hope this has helped you apply a little bit of your trig knowledge. It's like, it's really, really a lot of fun if you can start seeing your 3D stuff. This stuff is so applicable in real life. And on that note, we're actually going to go into a really cool career video. We're going to see how trigonometry can be applied in the realm of architecture. It's a really fun video, guys. And if you like what you see, download the app. We have so many more for you. But for now, let's check out this architect. So my name is Kevin Stain. I'm a professional architect. Graduated about seven years ago from Wits University in Johannesburg. Uh, spent a few years overseas in Canada. I've been focused a lot on mixed-use, large-scale developments, with primary focus is more in residential. It's been a fun, fun journey up until this point. We have the skills to really see the big picture. So you know, we can see areas in communities or cities that need help or they need, there, there's a gap somewhere, and you know, if there's a need that a person has, we can, we can go and source and help people to take that vision or take that 
moments of this will actually really make a big impact on the community and we can design something that's going to create massive change to better environments, better communities. And that's, that's invaluable. You know, finish school, you go to university, um, you'll come out of university as almost a candidate architect. And from there, you will go through a couple of years and then you'll become an architect, like a professional architect. And then you're going to go, say, within a 10-year period, you'll do a senior architect. And within the spaces of practices, you'll go from an architect to an associate to an associate director, then to like a director, and then it can scale across. It's really incredible to have this vision on like a piece of paper and then translate it into something that is this physical built setting stone element of the world. Golden ratio is a, is a calculation and you can apply that to a facade of a building, like an elevation. And you, can, you can give it a rhythm, same way in music. There's, there's a rhythm in music and it has a mathematical equation. Other areas are, um, I know today with the sustainable movements, the green energies, there's a lot of um, comfort calculations, there's a lot of thermal calculations, energy calculations, and that requires a mathematical understanding. Also in structurally to understand vaults, domes, bridges, all of that has mathematical understanding. And then one can also, in a way, you know, you can look at calculus and bridges and parabolas, and, and those are definitely, and also angles, just simple angles of buildings. Trig's based around angles. It's based around certain um, triangular geometries, whether they plan, whether they're elevation, whether, you, know, you think of the, the original pyramids, they were a mathematical proportion of, of trig. And, at the same time, you know, today with our technologies that we're using, we can actually take the trigonometry principles and apply them to certain softwares in order to generate geometrical forms that we need. Still working at angles, I'm still using sine, cos, tan, and all those different things from trig that I still use today. And maybe not as intricate, but I needed to know the basis on which to, to do what I do. What is happening more and more now with our technologies is you can start to input formulas, uh, mathematical equations. You can use that mathematical coding in the software to build three-dimensional forms. And also, um, some of them are getting more complex where you can go down to base coding where you can input numbers and through graphic means and they'll, they'll generate forms for you. Architecture is a profession about seeing and looking, not just at the physical world in which you are, but also at the needs of people. You know, we, we design space and we facilitate um, the built environment. And in order for us to really succeed in that is we've got to know our user client, we have to know what the end result needs to be, but we also need to be up to date with what's happening in the world and what society needs and what people need. And that's all about staying curious. Yes, guys, that sums up another one of our episodes. Thank you so much for tuning in. And to everyone who sent in questions, you're the best. Thank you so much, Liberty, for sponsoring us. It's a really great show, and we're so excited to be here. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same place. We'd love to have you with us. Bye for now.